What's up everyone? In today's video, we're gonna be creating a vintage 90s NBA championship style graphic. So these are the type of shirts that I wore a lot as a kid and I'm super hyped to show you some of my methods for creating these types of graphics inside Photoshop. Let's go. What's up everyone? So first of all, thank you so much to all the new subscribers that are here. Thank you to everyone who's been subscribed. At the time I'm making this video, we're almost to 20,000 subs on this channel. I'm super hyped on that. I only have each and every one of you to thank, so thank you. So check it out. In today's video, we are going to be doing a vintage, like 90s NBA t-shirt, right? So there's so many different brands from the 90s who did this well. You've got your Salem's of the world, uh, Nutmeg, Champion, Starter. Literally, like I'm of the age where I was able to tune in on random nights and just watch Jordan play, watch you know uh, Alonzo Mourning play, like Ewing play, like Charles Barkley, all these iconic players. And you know I had the posters on the wall, I had the T-shirts. I was like the 90s NBA kid, like through and through. So now that I'm older, I always get super nostalgic whenever I see those 90s graphics. It makes me think about being, you know, 9, 10, 11 years old, watching the Bulls on TV, wearing the jerseys, all that shit. And I really wanted to put together a tutorial where I create those types of throwback graphics, or at least show you my method for it. So I think without further ado, let's just jump into my computer and I'll show you what's going on. Okay, so this is the graphic that I put together. Um, using you know different photos I found from the 90s this is the inspiration I used so you'll see that like I literally used this exact photo in this design but I use it in a completely different way right that's one thing that I really want each and every one of you to pay attention to like whenever I find inspiration that's all it is right inspiration doesn't mean you know I use the same Rodman photo the same Pippen photo the same Jordan photo the same font like everything you just look at it and you go like, what can I do, you know, in my design that's going to give it the same vibe as this authentic 90s graphic, right? So look, let's look at a few things. The font right here, right? I just happen to know that this is like Rockwell or if it's not, it's incredibly close to it. So I used Rockwell down here, but I didn't use it in the same way, right? Different sort of gradient, like I use it on the bottom, like it's not the same but it's the same font and that makes sense because it, there was only so many fonts really available in the 90s. Um, so they used the same one here as well. Here this looks like maybe like Arial just like squashed down a, a ton or squ squash, squished down, whatever. So in my graphic, you know, I took some liberties and used a few different fonts that are, you know, reminiscent of the 90s. So like brush script, like that's about as basic of a script font as you can use. So if you're ever doing like a throwback, even like 80s style graphic, like brush script will work pretty well for you. Um, for Chicago Bulls, I actually just used a font that was just like a generic sort of like uh, chunky serif font that was like kind of a little bit like athletic as well. It's not like a 90s font. Um, it's just one that looks like it sure that definitely could have been a font used in the 90s right so not too far off the photos um you know just they're what i could find and they're like decently high resolution they're not like amazing you know i don't have like the fucking source files that the photographers used or anything like that these are just from google but you get the point so really quick before we jump into recreating this i want to show you how important adding things like selective color and like levels um, in this case, I used Vibrance as well, but adding these effects to the overall design, um, how important it is and how much it can change it. So check this out. I've got two different selective colors on this. So let's get rid of one, two, got rid of Vibrance, got rid of Levels. So this is just using this photo straight from Google, maybe like tweaking brightness and contrast a little bit on them obviously the the background photo has been edited pretty heavily from the full color one but adding selective color and adding like fixing the levels and making these adjustments after you've completed the graphic is the cherry on top like a hundred percent so i always say this i've said this in other videos before when you think you're done with a design spend another 15 minutes on it and think about what other adjustments you can make 
to give it a more authentic look, right? Okay, so let's hide this and I'll bring in the photos that I used for this design. We're not gonna get into like Google. I've done that a million times. Uh, if you don't know how to grab photos from Google, uh, I don't know what to tell you. It's, <laughs> it's fairly simple. So um, I'm just gonna make it short and sweet. We've got all the photos here ready to go. Um, but one thing that I'm gonna show you, which I think you'll find pretty cool, is a new method for cutting out photos. So first and foremost, this is this is not the cleanest way to do it in my opinion because you really need to have photos that are like either like on a green screen or something or like with like very plain backgrounds that are not like super complicated for this method to work like super super well uh from the jump but i'm at least going to show you like how i did it in this case so basically let's say you've got let's start with this rodman photo okay so we've got the Rodman photo. Go to, and I'll close it so you know where to go. Go to Window, Properties, and bring up this Properties window, right? And you might see, whoops, you might see quick actions look like this. And I think this is just for uh, newer versions of Photoshop. So sorry if you're using like 2015 or whatever. Like, I think this is maybe within the last few years they featured this, but I could be wrong. But anyways. So, you'll see remove background and select subject under quick actions. So the first thing I always do when I'm using this tool is duplicate the photo in case I need to go back later and edit it more or like something gets fucked up in this process. Um, but I'll just hit remove background and just see how it looks. So right there, that actually worked pretty damn well. So yeah, this particular method isn't gonna work with every single photo. It works the best with, you know, in this case, the background isn't super complicated. You know, there's a nice contrast between the, the main like figures in the photo and the background. So I think that's why it worked pretty well in this case. But if you zoom in, you know, it's not perfectly clean. So what I would do in this case is, you know, I would just click first convert to smart object and then I'll just, I'll just rasterize it right away and just go in literally with like an eraser brush. Like I've got it at nine pixels right now and just like clean it up a bit. You know what I mean? And I don't know that I'm gonna do this for every single photo in this tutorial um, just because it would take a really long time to do it because I'm using like fucking six photos. But yeah, basically I would just go around and just like clean it up. You know, like any place that you see, like looks a little like sketchy, just clean it up a bit, you know? So like, these are all details that like, they're definitely important, but like, I don't know, man, like some of like the very small, like ridges on the edge, like you don't really have to like stress about in my opinion. Yeah. So to get rid of these guys, I mean, I would just grab the, um, polygonal lasso tool and just like uh, cut them out. So I'm just like cutting around the shoe. You guys know that I always work a little bit faster than I would normally in these tutorials just to get the point across, but you know, you'd wanna be a little bit more careful, a little more precise when doing this, you know, but I would just like cut out that area, hit delete, get rid of that. This, uh, I think it just like, whoops, fades out. Yeah, so you don't even see, you don't even need like any of this stuff. I'll just cut that out. All right, so there we've got our clean Rodman, I mean clean-ish, right? So next up we've got Big Scotty Pippen. Uh, you know I had the up tempos, maybe top three sneakers of the 90s. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. The black and white up tempos, it's, it's game over as far as I'm concerned. All right, duplicate that photo right away. And then we're gonna go to remove back, let's zoom in a bit, remove background, right? So let's see what happens with this photo. So pretty clean for the most part. His finger disappears, which is not good. So let's just go back to the, to the Scotty photo, the original one, right? And I'm just gonna like use the lasso tool and 
lasso around his finger. Oops, messed it up, but it's okay. Make sure you've got um, this second box at the top checked here that says add to selection, because then you can just keep using this lasso tool if you like mess up or like add more stuff, you know what I mean? So that's pretty decent. I think that'll work. So now I'm just gonna hit Command J and then we've got his finger back. So I'm going to merge these two layers together. And how's the rest of the photo look? Honestly, pretty good. We've got this random speck of light there from the background. The shorts looking a little sketchy here. I'm just gonna use the eraser tool on that. Get a little bigger. Erase that, get that down there. I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, you know, I'm sure if we zoom in, there's like some little imperfections. But like I said, I'm, I'm not gonna go through and like clean up everything in its entirety. The, the majority of this video is just gonna be showing how I collage everything together, use selective color and, and text and all that. So let's just keep it moving. Like, So next up, we've got the Jordan Pippin Rodman photo here. Uh, super iconic photo. Uh, sorry, Ron. Ron Harper is, is not gonna get any love on this uh, particular shirt, uh, but you know, asset to the team, shout out to Ron Harper. So let's duplicate it as always. Let's see what happens, remove background. What do we got? Pretty damn clean. You know, we've got some, some shadiness going on here with the shorts, some background elements still in here, but for the most part, I mean, I think we can work with it. You know, the majority of the of the um, photo looks fine. So for this, let's just go back to the original photo and uh, should grab these shorts here, cut out the little part that was missing. And let's see what this does. I'm just gonna throw this to the top, Command J. That pretty much did it, little area here. And I'm just gonna go back to that same photo and do it again. I'm just gonna start merging these layers as we go. This leg, uh, let's see, did we, does it matter? I think it's behind some text, yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yep, yeah, let's see this. I think the same thing probably doesn't matter. Can't see it, because I'm an idiot. Okay, uh, we can clean it up a little bit. You know, just clean it up here. Mm -hmm. Once again, when you do it, be more precise. I just do this for the tutorials so you guys can get a general idea of how it, how I approach this stuff. But I don't want to make these videos super long. I don't want. I also don't like editing, so just full transparency. I hate editing, so I don't want to like make one part like fast forward through all this shit and like I don't know. I just like to get into the meat of it and let you guys like, you're all smart enough to know what to do. All right, so looking pretty good. I'm just gonna keep merging these layers as we go. Let's get rid of this background stuff here. Just gonna use the old polygonal lasso tool. Just cutting it out, going super fast. All right. Get rid of that, delete. All right, uh, some more shit over here. Damn. All right, ah oh, shit, Ron's peeking in. You trying to creep into this fucking design, Ron? I told you, bro, I'm sorry. This one's not for you. All right, so I think we've got one more photo left for the cutting out, or for the cutting out object thing. I think this one's gonna be a banger. It's gonna go super easy, because I can tell the background looks like pretty blurry. Let's just see what happens. Duplicate it first. All right, Phil, it's Phil's time to shine. Remove the background. Woo! Clean, baby. Relatively speaking, clean. You know, it's a little bit sketchy around the edges, but again, for this, what the fuck is that? Jesus, what do you do? <laughs> Phil, come on, bro. You can't have that. Let's uh, 
rasterize this real quick. Okay. All right. So those are the main like images, right? So we've got all the cutting out done. Let's go to this um, uh, Jordan photo. That's gonna be the background, right? So I really wanted to use this like iconic light shade of blue from the 90s. Uh, it crept into a lot of like, especially Bulls t-shirts from, from the championship era teams. And it just always hits different. Like that light blue, especially in the background, it just like sets off designs in such a good way. Like look at like the inspiration design, like that blue, there's little hits of blue, like even with on Rodman's hair, they added it. Like I love that shit. So I grabbed that directly just from this, I believe, like I just use the uh, eyedropper tool here and just like grabbed that shade right from the inspiration design. So that's what we're gonna do here. So on this background uh, photo of Jordan, the first thing I did was, well, first of all, it looks a little off because Rodman shouldn't be covering Jordan's face that much. Oh, it's his leg, bro. Rodman's leg's not supposed to be showing. All right, we're gonna fix that. Yeah, all right. Sorry, worm. We gotta, gotta do some surgery on you. All right, so that's better, all right. So, we are going to first make this Jordan uh, background image grayscale. So let's just go up to image adjustments, uh, black and white. Why am I not seeing it? There we go, all right. All right, so we've got our black and white image just hit okay. Um, I'm gonna mess with the levels a little bit just to like bring some more contrast to the photo. So image adjustments, uh, levels. So let's just play with this a little bit. And this is also gonna get rid of some of the, um, you know, background details of the photo and bring Mike a little bit more into the, the foreground, you know, bring his face, you know, mostly, but. Okay, it's pretty good. And we're gonna be adding a gradient to the top and bottom and side, so I'm not worried about like those hard edges, right? So just double click this um, background layer, right? Jordan background photo and click gradient overlay. I think a lot of you are selecting this first option by mistake, um, which is two solid colors and it's just gonna cover the photo. Cause I get that question all the time in my DMs like about this in particular. So make sure you have this second option, foreground and transparent selected. Um, so the first gradient is just on the bottom. It's at 90 degrees currently, the angle is at 90 degrees. And we're gonna move the scale down to 10. Usually when I'm like blending background photos, I'm between 10, 25, maybe 50, but we're gonna, we're gonna use 10 on this, all right? Next, we're gonna click the plus sign next to gradient overlay because we're gonna add three more gradients so we can cover the right, left side, and top. So we're gonna change the angle on this second gradient overlay to zero, and that's gonna cover the left side of the image. So we can blend that over the same way we did on the bottom. Hit the plus sign again, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna reverse the uh, zero degree angle so you know it would go to 180 but just real quickly you can just hit um just hit reverse here so that'll be the right side and same thing just i'm just dragging it over with the mouse to like get it where i want the scale is still at zero and then lastly again you can just do 90 degrees reverse and that's going to be the top okay so otherwise it's just negative 90 degrees, right? Same thing, I just gotta turn off the reverse. Either way works, I just do reverse because it's one click. It, it saves me about one millionth of a, a fraction of a second, if that's a thing. Anyways, uh, so, <laughs> all right. So we're done, you know, basically with the background image, it's blended in a lot more seamlessly. It doesn't have those harshly cut off edges. And the next thing I did is applied um, a color overlay um, and I literally used overlay, right? So I used that blue color and let's just grab it again. looks like the color's a little different here, but 
So this, you know, you've licensed to mess around and, and definitely get creative. You could try multiply, you could try uh, color burn, you could try, you know, a lot of these options are gonna look terrible uh, and you'll just find that through experimenting, but I usually end up for this kind of stuff between overlay and multiply. I like overlay because it retains the white in the photos. Um, so that's what I would recommend, but yeah, definitely experiment and just use whatever you think looks good. Okay, so now I think we're ready to add some text onto this graphic. Um, I'm just gonna go to the top layer here and type out Chicago Bulls. And because Chicago Bulls is like a relatively long um, phrase for, for going across the t-shirt, that's why I decided to use a more like content, condensed font um, so that it's a little bit taller. I can pack in more letters into a smaller space. Um, so I think I used a font called Grav Track. Yeah. And I think I used the compressed bold just so it's like super, uh, yeah, compressed, I guess would be a great, a great word for it. Um, so just going to drag this so it's like taking up, you know, most of the canvas and get it centered. And I think on this particular design, I wanted to use like sort of the gold text, but with a gradient. So the issue there is that when you use a gradient, like the way I did here and you see it's arched, there's, you can't apply a style to a layer style to arched text and have it be arched as well. Not to my knowledge, at least like that's something I think maybe you can do an illustrator. I don't know, but like in Photoshop, it, it has to be done straight across first and then I'll, I'll just show you. All right. So the first thing we got to do though is install some of these, um, textile packs from fullermo.com, right? I use the 90s NBA textile pack volume one on this graphic. Um, this pack was put together um, and it was inspired by obviously NBA like style graphics from the 90s. So if you wanna check this out, it's over on fullermo.com. Um, there's always a link in the, in the description if you want to grab this particular pack, but let's just get it installed. So right now there's nothing installed uh, in my layer styles whatsoever. And so I'm just going to drag this to the Photoshop icon and now it's installed. Cool. Pretty easy, huh? So I'll just go through these real quick. Why not? Just to like show you what's available in this particular pack. So. We've got this, um, you know, layer style with the nice like um, basketball texture in here. You can see it's like high res as fuck. Um, <laughs> and another version of it here that's more like um, desaturated colors. You know, you can um, you can use these layer styles as inspiration for. Um, coloring the, the rest of your design, right? Because sometimes people can get stuck and not really know what colors to use. If you get your text in first and, you know, for example, it's a Lakers, um, you know, graphic here, there's already like the Lakers purple and yellow in here. It's a little more desaturated than the classic like gold because it is based off d more desaturated vintage graphics from the 90s that aren't maybe as bright and bold as they once were. Um, but yeah, let's just keep cruising through. This was based off a uh, Detroit Pistons championship. Uh, so it says 90s champs. Here we've got 91 champs, Bulls, um, more of like the crimson color versus crimson burgundy versus like the bright red. Keep cruising through. Um, I threw some Suns in here because although they didn't win a championship in the 90s, they were obviously a super iconic team with Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, you know, obviously Charles Barkley, had to show them some love as well. Um, this nice like uh, metallic sort of chrome, 95 finals. This was, I guess 95 Rockets, right? 94, 95 is when the, um, the Rockets had a nice repeat. Pretty, pretty standard, you know, here, but this is like something that's actually kind of similar to this um, example just with the the real classic like 
gradient, you know. Utah Jazz was the inspiration for this one. Another Bulls. Uh, Trailblazers, they were huge in the early 90s, um, you know, with, with Drexler and, and Terry Porter. And last but not least, like the iconic sort of championship ring, like gold um, uh, effect. So two options for that. I went with this one for, um, for this particular graphic. So let's just click OK. We've got our style in here. And from here, I'm going to duplicate the text and then I'm going to convert it to a smart object right away. So that's just right clicking, convert to smart object. Okay, so we are going to now warp this text and we're gonna have make sure show, show transform controls is checked at the top. We're gonna highlight this text layer right here. And we're gonna go up to uh, switch, I think this is called, yeah, switch between free transform and warp modes. So click that and then you'll see warp over here, right? And for this, I think I used arc lower, um, but then I actually arced it the other way, if I'm not mistaken, let's see. So change it to negative, yeah, maybe like negative 20 to 30 probably. So yeah, negative 30 looks good here for the bend. And then I just click the little um, move tool here. And now I'm gonna grab the middle of this um, text, right? To do that, you see like the little white square here in the center and I'm gonna hold down shift and just drag the bottom. And that's going to keep the top relatively straight. It's not perfectly straight, but it's relatively straight. And it's gonna give just that arc on the bottom, which is like super, I don't know, it's super iconic. It's used so much, especially in 90s graphic. And it's just like a good headline, like bold look. So that's how I do it. And just bring that up so it's, you know, kind of where we want it on the graphic. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so we've got our text done. Boom. So now, what else are we doing? All right, we are adding champions, right? Yep, champions, 1996 world, and the NBA logo, and this Bulls logo still. Can't forget that. So let's go back up, and we're going to write... 1996 champ champs is that all I wrote or did I write champions bro my memory I'm getting old I'm getting you know I'm in my 30s the memories are starting to go okay it doesn't even say champs that's how I literally clicked it 10 seconds ago couldn't remember what it said it's just it's all downhill from here all right so <laughs> 1996 world can we remember that there we go and we use just a brush script, classic. This is this is just a stock font. That's like, man, if you're designing these types of graphics, like sometimes you don't have to look any further than, um, or any farther than, or further, yeah, farther is distance, further is, okay, yeah. You don't have to look any further than uh, the stock fonts that are already installed uh, on your computer, so. Let's uh, get the sizing right. How did we size this? Just bring this up so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. So, ooh, pretty close right off the bat. And then I'm just going to right click next to it. Oops. Right click next to it, go to skew, and I'm just gonna like grab this um, white little like box here right on the side and just like drag it up. So that'll skew it. Let's do it on the left side too. Pretty close. That'll definitely do. All right, so let's bring it back down into our group. Okay, and that's just gonna be gold color. I'm going to show all effects. Let's make this this gold color from the top here, right? Okay, and a little drop shadow action. Opacity, opacity, normal and 100%. Just mess with the distance. I just get a nice little like clean drop shadow on that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're just adding champions. 
That I can remember. Champions. And Rockwell is the font that I use for this, so. Again, just Rockwell Bold, in fact. So bring that down, and I believe I used a style pack on this one. And I think I used this one. So boom, right there, one click. It's got that 90s vibe. It's got that blue already in it. That was obviously um, something I did on purpose. And I'm just gonna make sure that it's um, like aligned with the uh, width of this top text. So I'm just bringing it up here and eyeballing it. Bring that down. Make sure it's uh, yeah, centered with that top text. And yeah, we are pretty good here. I'm just kind of nudging it a bit, getting it placed how I want it. And then I'm gonna bring this whole thing over a little bit. It's getting a little, looks a little off here. Okay, so we've got our main photos cut out. We've got our text laid out into the design. We've got our, you know, our collage has been created. Um, you know, from here, it's gonna be using the selective color. It's gonna be adding uh, the space background, adding the Bulls logo in here and the NBA logo. And then it's kind of a wrap for this one. Okay, so I literally just Googled Bulls logo PNG and NBA logo PNG. I like filtered it by large images. And I think this very first result is what's gonna work. Um, but it's not some, something we can just drag to Photoshop. You can see it's just, it's gonna be just the thumbnail. So we're gonna click this website and let's see if we have to go through any sort of bullshit. Um, all right, you showed me the ads, cool. Get your money. And we're, we might be able to just drag this top image to Photoshop. Hell yeah, okay, that worked, cool. Um, so from here, I'm just gonna use like the Polygono lasso tool for me, that's just a quick way to like grab a segment of an image, get what I need. So we've got that lassoed command C to copy over into our graphic. We're on the top layer here and just command V it in and boom, we are good. Right away I'm going to, um, actually the first thing I'm gonna do is change this color because it doesn't match the red of like the jerseys. It's, it's more of a pink color. Um, and that's super important for designs like this where you're using the same colors like multiple times. Um, you don't want different shades and different hues and tones, you know what I mean? So for this, I'm just going to use the um, magic wand tool. I'm gonna make sure contiguous is not checked at the top, but we can have anti-alias checked. And then I'm just gonna click the red and hit command J and that'll put the red on its own layer and then I'll just be able to double click it and do a, let's show all effects here, um, do a color overlay. And you know, if I want it to be gray, I guess I could do that, but I'm gonna grab this red from Scotty's um, jersey so that it's the same red, you know, that's present in the, in the other graphics here. So from here, I'm just gonna merge these two back together, holding down shift, We've got this top layer that we just uh, did the color overlay on, grab the layer under it, right click, and um, yeah, convert to smart object. Okay, so then you zoom in, you can see it got rid of all that pink. We just have this new like red color and we can shrink it down. I think it's still pretty big in the, um, the graphic I did. Let's take a look, or the first one I did. Okay. Pretty close, pretty close. Bring it down a little more. Let's sit right there. Okay, and then just into the center. And again, placement on all this stuff is like, you gotta pay attention to it, cause like if I just like put it here or whatever, you know, covering Jordan's face, like that wouldn't make any sense. Or if it was like covering Pippin here, you wanna always make sure that you're placing things in a way that makes sense and they're not like covering important parts of, of the graphic in my humble opinion. So the next thing I did is I also added a stroke to the outside of this, just to like give it a little more weight. So we're just gonna add a white stroke, position, outside, maybe like eight, eight or 10 
Um, yeah, let's just go eight. It's cool. Okay. Okay, and we might want to bring this bull's text up a little more, actually. Yeah, because I like when the horns are just like barely like going over the text. I don't want it to cover too much of it. Okay, so that is pretty good there. Um, we need the NBA logo in here now. So let's go to this. And again, I think just maybe this top result. Is that what I used? What did I use? And I forget you. Uh, yeah, bro, that's what I used. Just the classic like, yeah. So this, yeah, I think we might actually be able to just grab, yep. Drag it right from Google, Command A, copy. Actually, shit, no, let's do it the other way. Right click on this, copy image. We're gonna save ourselves some time here and then just Command V in here and same thing. I'm going to use the teal color that I use for the background on this NBA logo. So it's it's not this, this like different shade of blue that's not really present anywhere else in the design. So just like we did before, Magic wand, anti-alias checked. It's gonna grab all the blue from the NBA logo, Command J, color overlay with our uh, teal color, which is still over in our swatches here. And boom, merge these two together. And we've got a logo that's more cohesive with the rest of the graphic. And I'm gonna shrink it down here so it fits in nicely. Okay, 1996, World NBA Champions. All right, so, man, we're getting super close here. Okay, so next we are going to get a background in here. I just used the bootleg shirt creator pack uh, from fullermode.com because it has like a bunch of space imagery, it has globes, um, and some cityscapes, it has a bunch of stuff that just like lends itself very well to this style. So let's find it here, bootleg, bootleg shirt creator pack. Okay, cool. So it has it broken out into individual elements, but I like just using the brush sets because they're so easy to use. Um, you can just drag bootleg shirt creator brush set. It's an ABR file, drag to, to the icon. And then I'm gonna go down to my bottom layer here and select the brush and then when I go up to my brushes we can see it's been installed and there's all the default stuff here so let's check out what's available here uh oh there is a Chicago cool I could have used that all right but I'm not gonna um so uh space yeah space are the bottom options right so first things first let's add a new layer I'm just gonna do that by clicking the little create new layer icon here in the corner and I'm gonna use this teal color, so I'm gonna make sure that's my foreground swatch here. And sure, let's try this option, which is space, 03 space. Okay, so let's just click in here. And boom, we've got some nice space for the background. The cool thing about the brushes, um, for the most part, like some of them vary in size a bit, but like I made them, so like, the stuff that you would commonly use as backgrounds, like like um, globe, globes, space stuff, like um, the cityscapes, they'll just take up uh, most of the canvas, like just naturally. So like if you pick out any of these, they're all like around 15 inches wide. So if you're using the same um, canvas size as me, which is 15 inches wide, um, by 25 inches in height, 300 DPI, these brushes are gonna just like already be good to go. All right, so the next thing we gotta do is bring Michael uh, in the background back into the design. He's currently um, in space, you know, welcome to the Space Jam, Mike. But uh, yeah, we gotta, let's just erase it. You know, I'm gonna just treat it sort of like, this is paint, uh, you know, or whatever, and I'm just gonna, or like, the better analogy, I guess, would be like a pencil and I'm gonna use my eraser, right? That's definitely a better um, way to put it. So I'm gonna duplicate the space layer just in case whatever, something gets messed up, but I'm just gonna use the eraser. I'm just like, I'm probably gonna use a soft eraser. So I'm gonna bring the hardness down to zero here. 
but then I'm just gonna go through and just start erasing um, some of the space like dust so we can get Mike back in here. I'm gonna make the brush a little bigger. And this is kind of cool too. This is when you can take, you know, some like artistic license and like you can have a little bit of the space, you know, like overlapping into the photo so it's not like harshly cut off. Um, and it's a little bit more artistic, I guess, you know, like it's not, it makes it feel a little, a little more seamless as opposed to just like, here's one photo here and then here's a photo on top of it. Um, but you know, you just have to kind of use your eye and see what looks good. So like, I'm gonna leave a little space over here that's bleeding onto the jersey. I think it looks dope. Um, but yeah, that should probably do it. You know, so we can still, the biggest part was just we couldn't see Mike's face. Like he's fucking having an emotional moment right here and we gotta see it. You see on the bottom, this little like circle, it's half black, half white in our layers panel. Click that and you'll see a bunch of options that are um, different adjustments that you can make to, um, you know, a photo or, or the, the composition overall in this case. Um, so I'm going to select levels and I'm gonna adjust the levels, just kind of using my eye, but the first um, thing I generally do is just move this first like toggle that's going to increase the contrast a bit, and then you can bring this middle one over a bit, and there's no, uh, you know, I say this all the time, but there's no like magic formula for like numbers that you input here. It's literally just like using your eye and just seeing what looks good, seeing, you know, what looks, what my, what makes everything look the most cohesive. That is the number one most important thing. So I'm pretty happy with how this looks, whatever, 46, 1.18, 229. So maybe try those levels, maybe that'll work for you, maybe it won't. Okay, so we've got our levels adjusted. Let's add some selective color. So same thing, go down to this like half black, half white circle, and go to selective color, it's the bottom option. And I'm going to load in some, um, some of my selective color presets from the vintage photo selective color pack. So to do that, you can just click the little, the little like hamburger menu up at the um, top right corner of the properties here and go to load selective color preset and then just navigate to where, wherever that is. So like in my case, it's on the desktop. Um, uh, vintage photo select the color pack ASB files install these um, and yeah you can just click any of them hit open and boom that's gonna instantly change the overall look of the graphic and it's applied to everything in the graphic I know in the past I've shown how you can do this just for photos on their own like if I wanted to do the same thing just for the Scotty photo you know I'd go up to I probably convert to smart object I'd go to image adjustments selective color and this method totally still works but I like to apply selective color to the entirety of the graphic um, a lot of times at least that's what I've been doing recently and it's been working really well so um, the issue right now is that the 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 preset that I used for this one it's getting rid of a lot of that blue and I love the blue we want to make sure that's present so I'm just gonna reduce the opacity of the selective color um, layer, and that's gonna reduce the effect um, and bring back some of that blue. So just for easy math, let's just make it 50%. And that bring, brings back the blue. It still gives us sort of like a little bit of a washed out feel. I'll show you with it, without it. So just sort of like, in my opinion at least, like brings out some of what would be like um, the white um, base layer of a screen print. Is it just called the base layer? I used to know this when I worked in like a screen printing facility, I can't remember right now, but yeah, like the, the base layer of white that makes the color pop more, um, it kind of does that for this. So, 90s vibes. Um, after this, I think I added another selective color actually. So, um, I was just experimenting, so I did the same thing, click the little half black, half white circle, 
selective color. We're gonna load in um, some other ones here and see what works. And again, just experimenting, trying out different stuff to see what kind of effects we can get and just kind of using our own taste. Let's see, definitely not that one that looks insane. Look how crazy that looks, Jesus. I like what it does to this text at the top, but I, <laughs> This, this one is so hit or miss that like sometimes it looks super dope and sometimes it just like looks like a fucking mess. So this might be okay, just adding a little bit. Select the color four. Kinda like that, it kinda messes up the blue a little bit, but I don't know. Something about it, I like. And that's all that matters, right? So again, let's make this one 50% too. So, all right, without any selective color, with selective color. I like it, I think that looks dope. Okay, so this looks pretty good. I mean, we're, we're pretty much done. I think I have to um, put Scotty's finger over the, uh, the Chicago text here. Can't forget that. So let's just go down to the Scotty photo here. I'm just gonna grab the, um, polygono lasso tool and just grab like a big chunk there and hit command J and that's gonna just bring his finger up over everything like here's the finger layer and I just dragged it to the top so it's over everything right so maybe we bring down the Chicago Bulls text a bit because I don't like how much um, negative space there is in the center so let's just bring that down and yeah that feels a little bit better all right, so I mean, let's mock this up on a t-shirt and see how it looks. I have a feeling it's gonna look pretty dope, but uh, we'll navigate to the master bundle. Let's use the, um, let's use the Rue Porter Luxury Mockups. So Rue Porter Luxury Mockup Heavyweight T front. And we've got our instructions here, of course. Go down to your design goes here. And uh, let's use the DTG, um, method for um, this design. So normally like if I did something like this, it would be screen printed. Um, but one thing you can do, which I showed in another video is um, once you're all done with your graphic and you wanna, even, this works great for mockups honestly too, but just go up to image mode, index color, click okay. All the default stuff that's gonna show up in a second can stay the same. Click okay again. Then go back to image mode, RGB color, use the magic wand tool, make sure anti-alias and contiguous are not checked at the top. Click the black, hit delete. And now we just have this graphic on its own. And um, I'm just gonna reduce the image size to like 2400 pixels. Command A to grab the whole thing. Command C to copy, back over into our mock-up your design goes here command v into that layer are you sure you want to convert colors all this stuff don't show again click ok it's fine so oh man that looks fucking dope bro what if that was the shirt that'd be fucking crazy drag the corner down and i want it to be like pretty big on this mock-up so yeah those 90s graphics were usually like pretty huge on t-shirts. So, there you go. And that's on the mock. And shadows, highlights, all that stuff's all good. I would maybe like change it to screen and bring down the opacity a bit. Give it more of that 90s vibe and boom. So that is it for today. Hopefully you're able to use some of these methods and create your own, you know, 90s style t-shirt or whatever era you're trying to capture. Um, as always, I don't want to encourage any of you to uh, make t-shirts like this and sell them and profit off of, you know, using Michael Jordan's image. Um, not just because, uh, you know, obviously he doesn't need the money, so he'd be fine, but it's more about you. I don't want you to get in trouble, um, you know, so only, use these tips and tricks for you know clothing brands where you're using your own photos or you're using 
copyright free imagery and that sort of thing. So that's just a reminder. I always like to, you know, say that whenever possible, but hopefully, you know, you can just use these methods uh, and do some very dope legal stuff. So that's it for today. Um, be sure to subscribe if you have any questions whatsoever. You're welcome to leave them in the comments below. Make sure to like this video because that tells YouTube that you know this video is, is pretty good. A bunch of people liked it. Let's show it to more people. We can continue to build this community and uh, design some dope stuff together. Most people who watch these videos aren't even subscribed to my channel. I'll never understand it. If I see a bunch of videos that I like, I always subscribe to those people. But Maybe that's just me, I don't know. But I would appreciate it if you subscribed, like the video, comment below if you have any questions, and you can always hit me up on Instagram. It is at fuller.moe. Uh, drop me a DM, give me a follow. I'm always happy to give any guidance or answer questions that you might have. So that's it for today. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.